Okay, so here is a video for my masks. I start out with 100% um, cotton. The edges or the size of the cotton is 8 inches by 15 inches. Um, my mask includes a pouch. So the first thing that I do with my fabric is I go ahead and iron a hem on both short sides. And the reason I iron it is it's uh, easier for me than finger pressing. When I finger press, uh, my hem gets kind of wonky. So the next thing I do is I bring this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to try and do that here. Hold on. I didn't say it would be a perfect process, but here we go, over to my sewing machine. Hmm. Hope you didn't see my messy floor on the way over. So as I've said in previous videos, I usually take this and I will production sew this hem on all of the masks that I'm working on. I know that I can do about 25 masks a day, so I will go ahead and just production sew this. Oops, camera jiggle, sorry. So here we go. And industrial machine makes it easier. Not everyone can afford one. I bought this in 2005. And in reality, this is probably the first time I've actually been able to use it daily. So anyway, you sew all of your hems on the mess. You just cut them apart. I'm going to take one of these and sew the other side, and we'll go back over to the ironing table in just a second. I always hold my thread before I start. That way it doesn't get stuck in the hook. I'm not back tacking here because I'm going to be sewing this um, I'm going to be sewing this in multiple ways and therefore it's not going to come loose. All right so here we go. I do have a bucket over here to my left where I put all my thread but as you see I don't have a bunch of thread because I production sew. All right, come with me back over to the ironing board. And the next thing that I do is I grab my ruler. Sorry about the camera adjustment. So I grab my ruler and uh, and go ahead and iron it so that I can make my pouch for a liner pocket. For me, this is so much easier than taking individual pieces of fabric and sewing them together and trying to remember not to sew on a pocket. Of course, you know, there, there are a lot of people out there better than me that can <clears throat> remember all that stuff with no problem. So we're going back over to my sewing machine. And if that don't make me dizzy, I don't know what won't. So here we go. Forgot to clip that. Okay. 
the uh, loops that I use are nine inch. And I lay those loops down here and pull that back a little bit. There we go. Lay the loop inside on both sides. This is for an ear loop. And I'm using spandex nylon cord. Nice and softer, or softer on the ears than bungee. Um, although I have some bungee that I'm trying to use up too, and I found another way to do that through a tension system, which allows people to adjust the tension of their mask, which is really cool. Okay, so here we go, and boy, I didn't leave myself enough of a tail there, did I? Wobbly camera. Okay, so here I do back tack. And I'll usually production sew this. I'll sew all of one side, take them all apart. Come on over and sew the other side. If you're just making a single mask, that is not necessary. All right. Laid those in there. Uncoop thread. Now, some of the ties have changed in my masks, but one thing that remains the same and constant is this portion of the mask. I have not wavered from this. Um, it seems to wear really well. Let's head over to the ironing board. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this inside out. And here's where the iron comes in handy again. Ah, there we go. Sorry about the camera jiggle. I don't have a gimbal. So I have to manually adjust it. So I flatten this out, make it all pretty. And then I fold up and down. And when I do this, I leave about a quarter inch here so that I can sew that edge. And here we go, up and down. Press, and this keeps me from having to pin the mask and here we go back over to the sewing machine dum, 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 dum. throw my messy art supplies and everything else yay sorry about all the adjustment but there we go not really Yeah. 
All right, so I go ahead and I sew all the way around the entire mask. And I actually do flip this over, so I sew from the front side to, and have the back side on the feed dogs. The feed dogs t tend to feed this better on the back side than it does the front side, so there's less adjusting. And I do back tack here, and I back tack over each fold just to give it a little more, um, a little more strength there. The reason you go across the top and bottom is top stitching helps hold this edge together. When it washes, it washes cleaner. And again, this is more for people who don't sew regularly, who are kind of just beginning and wanting to help their community. So at this point, this mask could be done. But I have a new trick today that is going to allow for a tensioner. So it's going to involve using a piece of bungee cord or one millimeter cord of any type and a simple button. So this cord, this bungee cord is 12 inches and the button is approximately a half inch, three quarter inch. You can use a really large button. I wouldn't go anything below a half inch button, which is this one. Um, I usually use a four hole button and I'll cut off the ends of my bungee. And just very quickly um, seal them. Let's see if I could do that again with you being able to see it. So I've got the end and, and quickly seal. And it doesn't need any more than that to seal it. And I'm going to take you over to my ironing pad and we're going to do the rest over there. So here we are on the ironing pad, and I actually think I'm going to get down here pretty close so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to be threading this elastic here through the top and bottom hole, a top and bottom. So not a side to side, but a top and bottom in a trying in the diamond pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and thread that through. Oh, wait, I have to be able to see what I'm doing? Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to thread it through both sides. Now one side I'm just going to tie a regular overhand knot. And that's going to keep this bungee from coming out of the button. The other side I'm going to tie an overhand loop. And this is just to make the mask tensioner. So I'm literally going over and pulling that through and down as close to that pigtail as I can. Then I'll take my mask and I'll lay that loop underneath and pull the elastic and the button through the loop, basically making a hitch or a lark's head or um, a slip knot 
so that it attaches to the mask. And this is so the mask can be worn around the head. <clears throat> and let's see here. I guess I'll use this old box again. So I'm going to back up here. Excuse my crazy old box. So this box is the head. <laughs> Just uh, bear with me. And I've laid that, pretend that you're putting a mask on a head. That mask is going to go over that button there. And the tension is going to be pulling that pigtail. And it holds. And it doesn't come loose easily at all with just doing that. In order to get it off, you would just pull that over and get it off that way. But the tension on the button with the pigtail, once it gets tension, it really doesn't want to come off easily. Now, with, with a lot of speaking while wearing your mask, of course, it may come off easy. I mean, it won't come off easy, but it may lose some tension, so you'll have to pull your elastic to get more tension on that mask. But that is the tensioning system for the mask, and y'all have a great day.